and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each and every week meeting interesting people and talking about topical issues. And this we get a, a return visit from the insurance commissioner, Kim Holland. Yes, insurance is something that everybody in the state, if you're old enough, has to have. And uh, she regulates the entire business for the state of Oklahoma and uh, has uh, been in that job for a number of years now. And we're going to get a little bit of an update on what's going on in her office and how things are progressing. We talk about a subject that impacts just about everybody yes. across the board. Kim Holland here to discuss insurance issues and her office down at the state insurance commissioner's office. We'll be right back with that show right after this. You're watching The Verdict. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. Once again, the people have spoken. Once again, one name ranked highest for outstanding phone service. Once again, one company received a J.D. Power & Associates Award for overall customer satisfaction. And once again, it wasn't the old phone company. Cox Digital Telephone, the phone service people like most. Highest in residential telephone customer satisfaction in the Southwest region for the second year in a row. Are you the one looking for an exciting new career? If so, we are the one looking for you. We are Cox Communications, and we are searching for field service representatives. FSRs interact and perform services at our customers' home. Sound like the job for you? Then some of the things you need are a high school diploma and a good driving record. But for complete job description and qualification, go to jobs at cox.com. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today our guest is the Honorable uh, Kim Holland, the Insurance Commissioner of the State of Oklahoma, the first woman to be elected Insurance Commissioner uh, of the state. She has been serving in her uh, Commissioner capacity since 2005. Uh, she has uh, been a former member of the Oklahoma Health Care Authority. She's been an active uh, businesswoman uh, in the private sector before becoming commissioner. She's always been an active volunteer in many uh, cultural and civic activities. This is her second visit to the verdict. Uh, commissioner, welcome back. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Well, catch us up to date. What's happening currently in the office of the insurance commissioner? Well, we're busy every single day, but I think in terms of what our consumers expect of us, I think there, I could characterize it two things. Things. One, accountability, and secondly, leadership. So in terms of accountability, what we've been working on is making sure that our consuming public, our customer base, really um, uh, finds our office relevant. And we do that in a variety of ways, particularly in terms of consumer protections as well as uh, education.
education, consumer education, and advocacy. So we're doing everything we can to make our office more accessible to our consumers. Is the workload to your office seasonal at all, or is it pretty much just nonstop all year? It's nonstop all year round. We, sh we certainly do have busier seasons during the legislative and session. And what would those be? Okay, during Legislat the session. You bet. We're mm -hmm. very busy because our, we have an important role to make sure our legislative body is educated on issues that are relevant to our consumers in the industry. Um, but other than that, we're we're very, very busy all year round. Um, in March of every year, we receive the annual statements for the 1,600 insurance companies that do business in the state. So we have to review all of that information. We've got fraud issues that we're monitoring all year round. Uh, my, my fraud task force uh, is a law enforcement uh, group, actually, and um, they're busy all year round uh, responding to consumer concerns about fraud or any kind of uh, inappropriate activity out in the industry. Commissioner, one thing I've been taken with since uh, your last visit is finding out about the size of your staff and the size of your responsibility. So I'd like for us to talk about that just a little bit. Uh, what size of permanent staff do you typically have? Our, our staff is, uh, we're authorized for 153 employees and we run pretty close to that all of the time. Most of our employees are in Oklahoma City, although we have about a dozen uh, in the Tulsa area as well, and they're responding to consumer issues as well as are their regulatory functions. Well, let's run a, uh, run those 153 uh, until they're out of breath, it looks like, because about how many uh, agents do you have to uh, license each year? Well, we issue over 80,000 licenses for insurance agents every year. About half of those uh, licensed agents reside in Oklahoma, and then the other half are non-resident agents but are doing business in Oklahoma. But you have supervisory responsibility over their activities if they do something wrong. I certainly if, do. If it's in Oklahoma. I certainly do. And, and monitor their continuing education because we want our, our agent population to be well versed in all of the technical aspects of their insurance products which are increasingly complex and we want them to be able to inform consumers appropriately about the products that they're buying. Now you also uh, mentioned that you had 1,600 companies yes, that 1600. Uh, are registered or licensed to do business in Oklahoma. That's certainly true. We have 103 uh, domestic companies, domestic meaning that they are incorporated right here in Oklahoma. And then the balance are what we call foreign companies, although, although by and large they're American companies that are offering some product here in Oklahoma. And they generate about $11 billion in premium every year hmm. out of our state. And you've got to regulate those companies. I've got to regulate all of them. Now, I'm yeah. almost through, but not quite. Now, you also regulate uh, bail bondsmen, uh, real estate appraisers, and funeral directors. That's correct. When you think about a bail bonds, it's somewhat of an insurance policy, if you will, mm -hmm. and funeral directors sell pre-need benefits. So they're licensed as an insurance, uh, like an insurance license. Um, I consider the real estate appraisers a gift of the legislature. I actually have no uh, involvement with real estate other than through the appraiser office. Mm -hmm but I serve as the non-voting chair of their board. I vote only in the instance of a tie, but we monitor their continuing education, their license, licensure, as well as the, regulate, uh, the regulatory uh, oversight of real estate appraisers that do a very important function in terms of uh, for our consumers uh, in the field every day. What came out of the 2000 session that affected your office? Well, actually, most of uh, our work in terms of the legislature, as you can appreciate, is from we're we're there to make sure that our um, all the, we regulate comply with the law. We're not we're not policymakers. I'm the regulator, but we certainly influence the legislature. So a couple of things that we worked with the legislature to do were one, um, add some additional enforcement um, uh, to our ability to crack down on um, funeral home trusts that were mismanaging money. Unfortunately, we encountered a couple of instances where um, in sh uh, funeral homes, um, they're allowed to hold in trust people's pre-need um, deposits for future use and we're mismanaging those dollars. So we worked with the legislature to um, uh, impose heavier uh, uh, penalties on funeral home directors if they're found to be uh, misappropriating uh, consumer uh, funds. So we were that was very important to us. Um, we also, um, this last session, were able to enact what we call a provisional insurance license that we found with our industry becoming more and more complex. Our agent community, particularly new agents, need more than um, the traditional technical understanding of products, but really need to understand their role in working with consumers. So now we require our uh, new agents to receive uh, eight hours of just in general insurance overview and ethics 
training prior to even being able to sit for a license. Mm -hmm. So that's going. We're hoping that with the help of our agent community, we'll have uh, more capable folks in the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 2008 legislative session, anything you, you guys are uh, tossing around, or or are there issues out there by others that you think you'll be uh, asked to check in on? A couple, actually. We go through a very diligent process where we gather information all year round from my staff because we're hearing from consumers. So that's one area that we are we monitor. What are our consumers telling us our concerns, and that gives us an opportunity to make to clean things up and modify our current statutes as need be. And then we work with not only the insurance industry but other organizations that are impacted by insurance. For example, one of the things that we're working collaboratively with right now is the Department of Public Safe Safety as well as the um, Tax Commission in creating an online verification system for auto security verification. Hmm. So we've had problems in the past with with fraudulent use or counterfeit security verifications and we have high incidences of uninsured drivers on the road and which is a concern to all of our citizens so we now have uh, been working with the Department of Public Safety and we'll have uh, be hiring a vendor that will provide online verification and we'll be working with the legislature this session to make sure that we change the verification form to, to um, get all the obtain or obtain all the information we need to um, uh, input into that new system. Now you you outlined for us uh, the uh, people who participate in the system and your regulation of them. You also have a, a, a important role in consumer education. Do Absolutely. you not? Absolutely. Certainly. In other words, the people who are the you've talked about the sellers. Now the people who are the buyers, you've got an education role. Can you tell us what you do there? Well, and I think that's really one of our most important functions is acting as a consumer advocate and a, and a, and a place where they, a consumer can come for information. Increasingly, like with all businesses, our citizens are using our, our website as a portal for uh, interaction with the department. In fact, we get over 200,000 hits every month on the insurance department's website. And there we're providing, um, people can get on and actually email us directly through the website and uh, we guarantee a 24-hour response to any email that we receive, including to me, so people can get right to me if they need to. Um, we are doing more and more seminars uh, or programs that are of interest to our consuming public. For instance, this last year, we did a seminar on climate change and how that's impacting Oklahoma, not only in terms of insurance, but um, just risk overall, which was very well received. Um, and uh, then, of course, our uh, more and more education to help consumers prevent fraud or abuse. Let me get back to that because I want to sure. ask you about the education you that you're asking for uh, fraud and abuse. It's very important. We're, inter we're interviewing the state's com uh, insurance commissioner, Kim Holland, right today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Our pledge as a company is to provide quality of service for our paying customers. When you illegally hook up cable, everyone pays. Theft of cable can cause outages. Sometimes poor reception. We seek out illegal use. And we prosecute offenders. 
you know someone not paying for service, call us at 1-800-466-5590. You could remain anonymous. Cable theft. It's more serious than you think. It's a crime. Many of us are careful to filter the water our children drink. But what about the information they're drinking in from the internet? Do you know where your child is going online or who they're talking to? With Cox Communications, there are easy ways to find out and helpful tools for filtering their internet use. I'm proud to partner with Cox Communications to help safeguard our nation's children. To learn more, visit cox.com slash take charge. Our children are our crown jewels. Let's protect them. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, our guest is the state's insurance commissioner, Kim Holland. When we broke, we were talking about the level of education that your office provides to inform consumers about insurance fraud. You bet. Um, a variety of different ways, obviously. One is just, again, through our website, but also through one of our outreach efforts is through our senior health insurance uh, counseling program. And that's an advocacy program that reaches out to communities throughout the state to, to uh, uh, contact our senior citizen population. And it works with them in helping them understand um, how fraud uh, can take place in, in uh, making a, an insurance purchase, whether that's a life insurance purchase or annuities or um, a Medicare purchase. And then we integrate that with our general office operations through our consumer assistance office and then, of course, through my fraud team who can respond immediately if our seniors or anyone, any consumer really is concerned that they may have been misled or misinformed intentionally on, in the their uh, insurance purchase interactions. Uh, uh, Kim, I know that as commissioner in Oklahoma, you're a member of the National Conference of Insurance Commissioners. National Insurance Commissioners, yes. Yes. Uh, tell us about that organization. Tell us what it does. How do you relate to it? How does it impact what goes on in Oklahoma, That's if right. at all? It does indeed. National Association of Insurance Commissioners is really the insurance commissioner's trade group, if you will, yeah. although I use that term usely, loosely in that it is um, our opportunity um, to get together and we work to promulgate common law in terms of common model language for the passage of laws within our respective states. Insurance obviously is, an, is a, a, uh, a consumer product that crosses state boundaries. It's an international uh, a concern, an international industry. It's a global industry. Um, but insurance is regulated by the states. So we meet on a quarterly basis to make sure that we uh, establish and maintain uniformity amongst our various states so that the business of insurance can be conducted effectively across state lines and that our consumers are protected. We don't pass laws, but we do promulgate model language that then we individually take back to the legislatures in our respective states in hopes that they'll uh, pass uh, that language. Uh, I know almost every year we see on a federal level an attempt to for the federal government to get involved in what is traditionally a state regulation, uh, state uh, regulation of insurance industry. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's a constant thing you're dealing with. It is constant and there is, but I must say there is a very important role for the federal government to play because it is an international and national concern. However, in terms of consumer protections, um, we believe as insurance commissioners, I believe personally and seen it borne out in our own state, that insurance commissioners have a better ability to responding to consumer concerns and issues uh, within our jurisdictions than the federal government does. Well, there's hardly any agency in the federal government that you'll get a response from the commissioner in 24 hours, mm -hmm. you know, well, that's, no matter what it is. And certainly. that's what happens at your office. That's exactly We've right. We've talked a lot about insurance, but really one of, the, one of the issues that I think affects people in the state of Oklahoma the most is people who aren't insured, whether it's for health insurance or whether it's for car insurance. How does your office combat that issue? And that's one of the areas, that, particularly with respect to the uninsurance as far as health insurance, that I'm taking a lead within our state to, to uh, hopefully uh, develop work with our policymakers to develop a plan for universal coverage in Oklahoma. And I'll, I use the term universal coverage uh, cautiously because mm -hmm. people have different ideas about that. In Oklahoma, it is not a single payer system. It is not a government run program. But we have 20% of our population, gentlemen, that are uninsured, 150,000 children, 700 hundred working adults that so have how no might that work what are, what are the options available well we don't know yet we are right now but we're going to find out we were just the uh, 
awarded a Robert Woods Johnson Foundation grant where we've pulled together a team of legislators and health policy uh, uh, professionals here within our state and many, many other leaders uh, across the state. And we'll be spending the next 18 months uh, with the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation in creating the Oklahoma plan. And we don't know what that looks like yet, but uh, we are um, gathering information across the state from our citizens. In fact, right now, the Oklahoma Insurance Department has a program underway that we're calling Choosing Health Plans Altogether, CHAT, which is a computer simulation that leads citizens through a process of identifying their health care priorities. So we're visiting 31 communities throughout the state in over 40 meetings, and when we're done, we'll have uh, heard from over 600 of our citizens uh, and gathered uh, a, a significant amount of data about what they think is important in a basic or core health insurance program and uh, we'll be work, uh, taking that data back to a legislative task force who will be making recommendations to the legislature. I know you've been in, and you've talked about it a little bit already today, but I'd like you to talk a little bit more about your efforts to protect the elderly in the purchase of Medicare uh, supplement insurance. Yes. Well, as I mentioned to you that uh, insurance is uh, state regulated, but the federal government uh, under the Medicare Modernization Act of 2003 created some special types of Medicare products. We call them Medicare Advantage products. And when they did that, they said that we're not going to allow states to um, have regulatory authority out of those plans. We're going we're to retain that at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. And uh, over time, that has caused a great deal of problems. Uh, we basically had an unregulated uh, industry where uh, our seniors have been victimized by overly aggressive insurance sales and, uh, quite frankly, a lack of oversight mm -hmm. on the part of insurance companies in making sure that their agent population that were selling products were adequately trained. This was of concern to me from the very beginning, and I was quite vocal about it uh, nationally through my organization, NAIC, and uh, through our, uh, to our congressional delegation. Ultimately, um, I uh, uh, issued or initiated an examination on a company to look at their activities in the field and uh, didn't like what I saw and uh, took that case to CMS, who did nothing. And uh, as a consequence to that, I was invited to come and talk to Congress, and I did that twice, both to the Senate and to the House, to let them know about just what was going on, the lack of the federal government's ability to respond to that. And indeed, in the New York Times today, there was another article about their inability to hold insurance companies accountable in terms of their financial responsibilities towards those plans. And uh, we're, we're hopeful that we're going to see legislation returning that authority back to the states. But even, in, in, uh, even until that happens, happens. Um, we have seen a change in, in terms of CMS's attitudes towards working collaboratively with the states and uh, we're continuing to communicate to our insurance mm -hmm. companies that we expect them to comply with Oklahoma state laws regardless of CMS's uh, um, preemption of our authority. Uh, 30 seconds to go on the show. What would you like the citizens to know about the, the office that you hold or the, the businesses that you regulate? Well, I want them to know that our, our, our office is a resource and most importantly that we hear about wrongdoing through our consumers. If we don't hear, we can't act. So I want our folks to know that they uh, we're here to hear, answer their concerns, address any problems that they've got, and uh, help them understand the complex world of insurance. We appreciate you coming back on The Verdict. Hope you'll come back real soon. I'll do that. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thanks. it. The State Insurance Commissioner, Kim Holland. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict.
The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. AT&T claims their new TV service is so advanced, it will usher in a whole new world of TV. What is this big new groundbreaking idea from the phone company? In most cases, it's just a satellite dish. Impressed? We didn't think so. There's a better choice. Cox, the digital experts. Hi, this is James Garner. Hi, this is Reba McIntyre. Hi, this is Johnny Bench. Hi, I'm Barry Switzer. Hey, everybody, this is Vince Gill. Welcome to my home state of Oklahoma, where we'll be celebrating 100 years of statehood in 2007. Our strength is our people, and the 2,100 Oklahomans from the Cox Communications family are proud to be part of Oklahoma's story. Cox and Oklahoma, true partners. Happy birthday, Oklahoma. We're back wrapping up a show with the State Insurance Commissioner, Kim Holland. Boy, talk about someone that doesn't need another responsibility. I mean, well, she's got her hands full. I, and with a pretty lean staff. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I was interested in the turnover uh, the comments you had because you can imagine what chaos it would be if you had so many things to do and you had constant uh, turnover in your office. It's obvious she does not. and She's got a team of mm -hmm. uh, trained professionals that are doing a, a great job for the citizens of Oklahoma, and there's certainly a lot to do. She's impressive. We have some uh, web address information for you. If you'd like more information on Kim Holland's office, you can go to their website at oid.state.ok.us. Or they have a hotline number. If you have a question or a comment that you regards an a insurance issue or another uh, regulatory uh, question for her office, that number is 800-522-0071. 800 522 And we also have a website with theverdict.tv. You can go on that website. Not only do you get a great looking picture of the two of us, but you can email us an idea about a topic that you'd like to see discussed or someone you'd like to see interviewed on a future edition of The Verdict. You know, let me interrupt. Yeah, sure. Uh, we really are serious about hearing from you on what kind of shows you'd like to see. And uh, from time to time we get suggestions, but not as often as we'd like. So really do uh, uh, encourage you to get on the website and tell us what kind of show you'd like to see. Uh, we do get from time to time saying, I'd like to see Mick, but we could do with that, can't. <laughs> but we dis disregard those. But we really would like to hear from our viewers. And it's theverdict.tv. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.